Let's do a thought experiment. Imagine a box filled with hydrogen atoms. Like billiard balls on a pool table, atoms actually move. And they do it in straight lines until they hit something. Like another hydrogen atom. Oh, see that? They stuck together. They're not separate hydrogen atoms anymore, but a pair of hydrogen atoms moving together. There goes another pair. When atoms join up like this, scientists call it a molecule. And I call the join between them a chemical bond. Here comes another hydrogen atom crashing into the hydrogen molecule. But this time it doesn't stick. Instead, it just bounces off. Hydrogen atoms bond once and that's it. They're just like that. Pretty quickly all the hydrogen atoms will collide and pair off into molecules. They will keep hitting each other, but they'll just bounce off. Scientists like to have a shorthand way of writing this molecule thingy. Here's one way to show it, with the hydrogen symbols joined by a stick to show the chemical bond between the atoms. Another way is to write H2 with a little 2 after the H and a bit lower. A number written this way is called a subscript. What do you think the 2 stands for? It counts the number of hydrogen atoms in the molecule. Easy, eh? So when we have a balloon filled with hydrogen gas, it really contains trillions of trillions of H2 molecules. Let's do another thought experiment. We'll go back to our box filled with hydrogen atoms, but this time put an oxygen atom in there too. When a hydrogen atom crashes into an oxygen atom, they stick together. But wait, when another hydrogen atom hits, it also sticks to the oxygen. What about a third hydrogen atom? No, that's it for oxygen. It can only make two bonds and then it's done. The molecule can be written with the stick method showing its bonds, or we could write it with the subscript method that counts the number of atoms in the molecule. We could write H2O1 showing that the molecule has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. But when there's only one atom of a kind in a molecule, scientists drop the one to make it even shorter to write. So when there's no number after a symbol, it means that there's just one atom of that type in the molecule. The shorthand becomes H2O. This way of writing a molecule is called its chemical formula. Recognize it? Yep, this one's the formula for water. When you drink a bowl of water, trillions of trillions H2O molecules go down your throat.
When the molecules of a substance are made of just one kind of atom, like H2, we call it an element. But when the molecules of a substance are made of different kinds of atoms, like H2O, we call it a compound. It's easy to tell the difference between an element and a compound just by looking at its formula. H2 contains only one symbol, H, so it's an element. H2O contains two symbols, H and O, so it's a compound. This rule even works when atoms don't make molecules. Like with a lump of carbon, we would write that as a C, so it's an element. Let's get back to our thought experiments. This time we'll put a nitrogen atom in the box with hydrogens. Again, when they collide they join up. One hydrogen bonds, two, three, but that's it. It can make three bonds with other atoms, but no more. This molecule contains three hydrogen atoms and one nitrogen atom. Here's the stick method of writing it, and the chemical formula is H3N, showing us that there are three hydrogens and one nitrogen in the molecule. Or it could be written the other way around, NH3, as this tells us the same thing. Scientists usually write it NH3, and we'll talk about that later. The substance made from NH3 molecules is called ammonia. It's a light colourless gas with a sharp pungent odour. If you want to smell ammonia you can try cleaning agents under your kitchen sink. They often have ammonia dissolved in them. Be careful when you breathe it. Is ammonia an element or a compound? Let's look at its formula, NH3. It's got two symbols, so it's a compound. Let's do our thought experiment on carbon now. It can bond with one, two, three, four hydrogen atoms, but not five. Carbon has a bonding power of 4. This molecule contains one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms and can be written as H4C but it's usually written CH4. Carbon is usually written first in formulas. Is CH4 an element or a compound? Its formula has two symbols so it's a compound. The substance made of CH4 molecules is called methane and it's sometimes called natural gas. Some vehicles use it as a fuel and if you have a gas stove it comes out of the burner. When you light the methane it burns. The CH4 molecules break into smaller bits and then they join with the oxygen in the air. This rebonding with oxygen releases a lot of heat which then cooks your food. Methane also famously comes out of both ends of cows. Trillions of trillions of molecules of CH4. To be honest not all of the gas molecules coming out of the cow will be methane. There will be probably lots of water, ammonia and other molecules too. It's a mixture, not pure methane. By the way, water molecules are not really green and ammonia molecules aren't blue either. I've just given the formulas different colours to tell them apart. Have you also noticed that molecules with different formulas make completely different substances? 
H2 molecules make light, colorless hydrogen gas, but H2O molecules make water, a colorless drinkable liquid. NH3 molecules make ammonia, a choking colorless gas, whereas CH4 molecules make methane gas, which can be used as a fuel. Each formula makes a different substance with its own personality, that is, its own unique set of properties. To summarize, we saw that hydrogen atoms can make only one bond, oxygen atoms can make two bonds, nitrogen three, and carbon four bonds with other atoms. This number of bonds that an atom can make is called its valency. Hydrogen has a valency of one, oxygen two, nitrogen three, and carbon four. We'll look at the valencies of other types of atoms later. Water, ammonia and methane are all important substances. Water is made when hydrogen bonds to oxygen, ammonia when hydrogen bonds to nitrogen, and methane when hydrogen bonds to carbon. Try to remember their names and formulas. Atoms can bond not only to hydrogen, but to many other kinds of atoms, including themselves. And when they do, they sometimes make double bonds and triple bonds. We'll look at that in the next video.